And I met these guys at a, at a UFO conference that were, that were doing these videos, these lucid dream videos. You might even know this crew, these guys. They were total artists. They do these, like, these videos, like 15, 20-minute videos where they pretend they're lucid dreaming and all that. Ah. And I met them at the UFO conference because they were volunteering for the audiovisual part of it. Awesome, yeah. And it was a total synchronicity. I go, I've just been watching you guys on video, and here you are at this conference. Yeah, on a different subject, too. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's kind of yeah. interesting. They're all intertwined in each other. You oh, know? totally. And, and they were fantastic guys. And uh, and we were getting right into lucid dreaming, and I was trying all the techniques for a while, and I just, I don't know, I, I wasn't very good at it. Every once in a while I could do it, but but that LeBurge book was really interesting to me and then your 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 book seemed like that was a contemporary like redo of that that's that included all this extra stuff in it you know it was fantastic yeah yeah i really liked it yeah i mean i i've like you i've read quite a few books on lucid dreaming so i kind of wanted to make it so that people had an introductory kind of experience with my book and then also um the biggest thing that I thought was lacking in lucid dreaming book is to be able to take the finally have the experience and then kind of extend it so that you can kind of know what to do after you have the experience. Because like, um, I spent all my life essentially, um, having these experiences, but then nobody really talks about what to do after that, you know? So, um, it has, the methods in there and additional techniques and stuff for pretty much everybody. Um, that's, coming into it essentially brand new and then um and you know most of those techniques i i didn't create myself you know i've read books and lis listened to researchers and stuff like that that have actually done the work and then um kind of focused on the science of it you know and try to keep it more scientific and then also um you know gave the the reader something to do after they had their first experience or where to take it after that so i would say it has like um some beginner elements to it and then also like what you know more advanced stuff to like actually what is possibly happening and where to go with it so um you know it, it's kind of i wrote the book for me and essentially you know in a way to kind of put together all my experiences in a framework that kind of makes sense, you know, like anybody that's written a book can talk about that experience where you, you write a bunch, you know, and you don't know really what to do with it. And then you start putting together and forming like a, a narrative out of it and creating a story. And then it starts coming together and, and you see things in that, that you normally don't get, you know? So in a way it's, it's like an advanced dream, dream journaling, you know, in yeah, yeah. creating this book. So it's been a, great experience in the sense that uh it's been hard but i also learned a lot you know from it yeah and um and it, i've grown a lot and you know met a lot of interesting people like yourself uh to discuss the book you know yeah that's fantastic so how long was it in the works for uh <laughs> that's a good question you know like uh most people say it takes a lifetime to write a book you know and i kind of agree with that you know um I, I spent a lot of time writing a lot of the content in the book um, throughout the years and then kind of reassembled it into a narrative that people could read. So, um, you know, it, I have my own personal blog as well as like a blog that other people can join in and stuff like that on my website. And a lot of the, you know, people that have followed my work and stuff like that would probably see similarities in the book as well yeah. as through my blog, you know, yeah. and, um, but I added a lot in there that I'd, I've never really released to anybody either. So I wanted to keep it fresh, but, um, you know, it takes, it take, took me a lifetime to really get the ability to, to write something like this. I'm not a great writer. So I had editors and stuff like that to kind of help me out, you know, and, um, and it's a lot of work for me, you know, um, so yeah, it took, it took a long time, man. Yeah. It was, it was a good book. It really is. How did Thanks. you, how yeah, did you incorporate it. like the hero's journey and Young's work into that? Cause I mean, that it's, this is so much deeper than just, you know, figuring out how to become aware in your dreams. I mean, it goes right, into yeah. a lot of deep stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Young's, uh, work, you know, um, unfortunately he passed away, so we can't really have a, you know, conversation one-on-one, -on -one, but, um, I've been a fan of his work, uh, for a long time and, um, you know, I, I started to go to grad school for um, Jungian depth psychology and really 
dove into the material, then finally, you know, actually read the work of his, and, you know, um, talked with people that have spent their entire lives essentially studying Jung's theories and practices and stuff and working with dreams. And I kind of used, you know, some of those techniques and tools that they provide me, not all of them, because, you know, some of them I didn't really agree with, but I used some of their techniques to kind of um, expand on that and make it into like a, uh, a better book, you know, um, I, I don't really like uh, attribute everything that I believe in and agree with <laughs> into uh, what Jung says, but yeah, um, yeah. I think there is a lot of good stuff in, in Jung's work. And so I tried to encompass that. And, um, you know, Joseph Campbell's hero's journey is it really like Jungian in a sense. It's he, he went to, um, he was a big proponent of the school I was going to uh, Pacific graduate Institute. And um, he, he was a big, you know, key figure there. So I, I saw his hero's journey uh, kind of motif, you know, theme and the structure of that. And I, realized that a lot of dream content actually um throughout the years kind of cycles around in this like um in this system you know like uh kind of like an ouroboros right and so uh that's the same symbol that um that joseph campbell uses for his hero's journeys as as a circle you know like you, uh -huh, okay. you go on the journey and then you return and then kind of the journey it never really stops you could say you know it continually goes over and over again so um you know i I've been into the Ouroboros for a long time, and that's kind of my symbol that I've adopted into my life as like this learning process and growing process that I'm going through. And you could call it individ individualization and uh, using that young word. And, um, you know, I, I, I saw that and I immediately kind of gravitated to it. So that's um, thus the tail eaters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, the hero's journey, I think, is... Uh, a great mechanism uh, to look at in terms of dream work and like a, not just one dream, but like a series of dreams throughout your life and the process that it's um, going through and trying to convey a message to you to help you grow as individual, you know? And so, yeah, that's kind of where it went to. I would cool. say that the book is like uh, somebody referred to it as, an individual mythology so um you know we read myth and stories throughout like ancient cultures like greek and egyptians and uh the roman gods and all that stuff and even in the the bible you could call it you know a myth and what i'm saying is like we dreams are myth-like they they are stories about us that use characters and symbols and stuff like that to create these very integrate uh stories that are important to our personal lives and um, what I proposed in the book is that these stories are equivalent to our own personal myth. They are the gods and they are the, the, the creatures of myths that we read in these stories, but there are ours, you know, and, and when, when we engage in that, they're a living, growing myth that we can, um, we can become more if we actually listen to them. So yeah. not random noise, like, uh, some of the mainstream scientists would like yeah, just to yeah, exactly. believe. Yeah, I love that. You have any questions? Is it like a literal thing? Do you literally listen to your dreams, or is it all symbology, or is there anything to those dream books that you know? <laughs> yeah, because like, I feel question. like they're all different. That's a great question. Yeah, that's a good question, man. Um, well, I tend to look at symbols and myths as very differently um, because of my background than probably uh, the majority uh, would think. So, um, you know, modernity would like us to think that symbols and myth means like. Um, fake right they, you you look at a story of the ancient gods and stuff like that and you're like oh that that's they're not real the gods aren't real you know and so we discredit it we throw it away um what i'm saying is there's a much deeper element to to myth and symbols than the surface level image that you see or the text that you read or anything like that so um when it comes to dream symbols i'm not one that says um, you know, you see a bird and that means X, right? Um, I'm not in the position to even really sit there and tell you what your dream means. Um, I believe that each individual needs to understand, build a relationship with their dreams and actually dive into it and 
explore what it speaks to you and it conveys a message to you. So um, it's very, it's time consuming in the sense that you have to put energy in, but whatever you put in, you get out of it. And um, I'm not surface level where, you know, one thing means one thing, like no, there's no dream dictionary that's going to tell me what my dream means. You know, um, there's some common elements in it, you know, like uh, somebody me, it's common that people dream of water sometimes and things like that. Right. And universally, like there's some uh, meanings to water that we kind of all share, you know, through our, uh, you could call it evolution, you know, so you can kind of take some elements out of a dream about water and kind of convey a message to somebody else, or maybe assist them in trying to understand what maybe they're dreaming about in terms of water and something like that, you know, but, um, big picture stuff. That's what I'm kind of talking about is not, it's not a group activity. It's very individual. It's very, um, energy you know you have to put a lot of energy into it to understand you know it's personal and and a lot of people assume that once you wake up from a dream you know like the dream's done and it's over with and whatever that was is done right but what uh i would like to convey is that dreams don't just end when you wake up you know they're in your psyche they're in your memory they're constantly being brought up as you're like going throughout your day and expressing it. So it, it's still in there, you know, it's still working just like, uh, you know, people express with psychedelics and stuff like that. They talk about how, when you engage with uh, you could call it a spirit or whatever, right? Like my uh, mother Aya or something like that. It doesn't just stop working once you <laughs> end the psychedelic trip, right? It continues with you throughout your life and you reflect on it and you can, converse with other people and have like a community and stuff like that. And all these things build up. I think in, in the reality of the situation is that myth and symbols are actually what manifest reality itself. So those things are higher priority than physical reality. So when you have a dream experience or something like that, it is actually still actively expressing itself into reality versus the other way around. Oh, right. That's, that's interesting. That's, yeah. Especially so when you have a real heavy, like, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. No, no. How, what would the other way around be? Like, like the other way around would be like a, a very material view of reality, right? Yeah, like yeah. material reality affects the affects, psyche yeah, yeah, versus yeah. like the psyche affects mater material reality. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you have those heavy dreams, like they can affect you for a few hours the next day. Like people oh, yeah. have these yeah. nightmares and they're just like, I'm still out of sorts after, you know, four or five hours in the morning. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes lifetime. Um, I had a dream, I'd say probably four years ago and I'm still, I still daily have physical experiences from that dream. I mean that, you know, um, anybody that knows me personally can attest to the power of that dream. You know, I talk about it often and, um, you know, I'm still working through that. So it's not a something, you know, like I've had psychedelic experiences, quite a few of them and none of them affect me on the level that that dream did, you know, they're very powerful. I'm not going to deny that. And they have a lot lasting effects on me by far, you know, but nothing came close to that, the power of that dream, you know, um, people make life choices off of dreams too. You know, like, um, I was in the military, I, I spent 14 years in the military and I had a dream, you know, on top of a lot of other things that were happening in my life, but the dream, I associate it to be the determining factor for me to say, I'm done. You know, I've had enough. I'm getting out. Wow. So, you know, 20 years in the military is retirement. So I gave up retirement essentially over a dream, you know, and most people would think that's crazy, you know, and I did too at the time, but I couldn't deny what the dream was telling me. You know, I had to listen to it. Otherwise I knew there was going to be big consequences if I didn't, you know, can you get into so. it at all or? What's that? Can you get into it at all? Uh, well, a dream, oddly, the dream wasn't like, um, if I explain the whole dream, yeah. you won't really like find anything in there. Um, that, <laughs> and I still don't, you know, it's like, but man, I was, you know, I was sitting down with counselors, um, you know, and, and I would tell them this dream and, and it, and, I knew that the counselor wasn't understanding what the hell I was talking about, you know, like they're like, okay, you know, just a bunch of weird shit going on in his, his mind. And, but I would tell him this dream and I just start like getting teary eyed, you know, and start just like breaking down. And, and I was like, I don't know why, you know, I don't know why I feel like this when I tell this dream, you know, and, and they didn't either, obviously, you know, but I knew that like, like I didn't know what the images meant at the time, but I knew 
what I needed to do, you know, and people kind of describe dreams sometimes like that, like really powerful dreams where you don't necessarily get like um, a movie, you know, that's going to have like a beginning and end to tell you exactly what to do, but you feel the intensity of what it's trying to convey to you, like a download, right. you know, psychedelics do the exact same thing. You you can't recall the entire experience when you come out of it, but then you're like, wow, you know, that was really powerful. I need to do some shit in my life, you know? And like, so it was kind of the same thing. It's like a download and I knew exactly what I needed to do. And I felt the emotion behind it, which is to me is even more powerful than being able to sit there and like write out the dream word for word or, you know, yeah. image by image and be able to convey it to other people. You know, the, like I said, dreams are personal, you know, sometimes you don't even need to say, you know, tell people your dreams, even though that's a big part of sharing, you know, and people are like, wow, when you share, they get really excited. But, um, you know, sometimes dreams are personal. You don't want to really tell them out there. So a long story short, you know, like, um, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't get into that one, but, I just don't think it'd be entertaining to be honest with you, yeah, but, um, yeah. no, that makes sense. So it's, it's a, yeah, it's a good way to explain how they affect you and, and you can't just describe them necessarily either. So, that's right. Cool. Yeah. So what about, uh, like, like, uh, you've got in your book, a couple chapters on guides and, uh, friends in your dreams and stuff like that. And I want to also touch on like healing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, guides, um, they're kind of hard to describe. I mean, everybody encounters like a something in their dream that has knowledge, you know, yeah, seemingly more knowledge than you do. And you don't necessarily have to be like in a lucid dream in order to have these experiences. Most of what I write about is in every common dream that you have, and you just don't really realize that you're dreaming. So you just, you know, engage with it. However, the dialogue and the story is that you would normally engage with the dream. Um, so there's not really much difference in a lucid dream between guides and stuff like that. You can still have like a powerful in, uh, interaction, but, uh, you know, to me, guides are like these characters in the dream that are much more knowledgeable and conscious, even than the dreamer, in a sense, they seem to know the world that you're in and what is going on. And they can convey to you like, um, messages, you know, very direct, clear, uh, messages for your, what is happening, you know, in not only the dream experiences, but in these, you know, um, experiences that you're having in life and stuff and what to do. So, um, I mean, I've had a lot of different guide interactions and they transform over time. They, they, um, you know, it, it seems that the, the guides have changed too, in some ways, you know, like they change, um, who they are. Um, but when interacting with them, they feel like they're, um, you know, they're, they're alive They're They feel like they're just as real as I am. And they've been there a long time, much longer than, than I have. It feels like, you know, they're ancient in that sense. Um, so, you know, they, they, they feel like they, they have something to teach me and I listen as best I can, you know, um, funny is that, uh, most of my guides are kind of annoyed with me because <laughs> they seem to think that I'm forgetting over and over again, what they teach. Wow. And I'm like, I'm like, I can't remember, you know, like yeah. I honestly am in the dream, like, Hey, I, I wish, you know, I wish I could remember what you taught me last time, you know? And they're like, ah, oh, geez, we'll, we'll teach you again, you know, like, um, and they just, they, they try, but then I wake up and of course I can't remember anything they taught me, you know, it's like, God dang it, you know? And, um, I remember one time, you know, I was talking with, uh, this lady in my dream and she kept telling me her name, you know, and I was like, what you know and she'd say her name again and i'll be like i can't remember you know, like immediately as she tell it to me i forget it and i was like ah and i'm like what's what's your name and and she'd be like i told you three times you know and she's getting really frustrated me and i'm like i'm sorry you know i'm just doing my best here so you know for one thing i've realized in my dreams is that my memory is really bad so <laughs> so my long-term memory and short-term memory is pretty pretty suffering and dream experiences as well as waking life so oh, that's um, hilarious. there seems to be but, something more powerful in the lucid state though like we had listeners email us some uh some of their lucid dreaming encounters before and i guess it might have been in some of the books i read where you can ask some of those guides or those those people that seem not just like a guide but i, I don't even know what to describe it as it seems more more uh, almost godlike yeah you know? yeah yeah exactly and you can ask them that deep profound question and they come up with this crazy answer that i feel like oh yeah wouldn't really 
apply in a normal dream state? Like, I feel like you have to be lucid to get to that level. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I've, I, w- I would say that I had guides in both, you know, but, um, um, definitely in my lucid dreams, um, I would say that I would, I, I would have more of those for sure. And I also lucid dreaming and interacting with those guides allowed me to see the guides in normal dreams, you know, in a, in a different way. Um, lucid dreaming isn't again, something like, uh, uh, that you just turn off, you know, it's like a, it's like a martial art practice that you're doing, right. You're, um, you do martial arts, right. A lot of people, I don't do martial arts, but I, I did when I was a kid and I've taken what I've learned from martial arts as a kid throughout my life, right. It doesn't just turn off and people that are really into martial arts, they, they're, actively practicing those concepts throughout their life like not just when they're in the um when they're practicing like in a gym or something like that right and i'd like to say that lucid dreaming is similar in the sense that it's not something that you just turn on and turn off right you practice it it changes who you are and continues out through not just your waking life or your your dreaming life but your waking life as well you're being you're trying to be more aware right and so it kind of bleeds over into normal dreams too, when you're really engaged within practice this thing, but you're right in the sense that like, um, you know, you're, you bring awareness into the dream and that's what gives you the lucidity, right? You're like, wow, this is a dream. And I can recall what questions I had when I was awake, you know, like the things that have been bothering me or the things I want to learn. And you can take those questions if you can recall them long enough, right? into the dream world and then bring it to the character, you know, the, yeah. the guide and be like, this is my question. And oftentimes it's very surprising what they have to say. Um, you know, uh, one thing that I, I spent a lot of time on is saying, what is this experience? You know, like, what is this dream experience? Is it real? You know, um, I took the same approach to psychedelics it actually is what led me to psychedelics to try to answer the question of what a dream is you know like what is this weird experience everybody has every single night even if you don't recall it you know it's like every single night almost five times on average each person has a dream right each night just weird hallucinations right that are just totally random seemingly right and and we don't pay attention to them so i was i was really intrigued by that and i'd bring it to the dream world and be like you know a dream character a guide i would call him and i'd be like hey you know like are dreams for real and you know i expect to get an answer that i would think of you know like yes or no you know and the dream character goes well yes and no and i was like (laughs) what like i just wanted a straight answer you know and they're like um they convey to me this very deep understanding about dreams and reality in, you know, in a very short period of time, they said, um, dreams, you know, are real and they're not real in the sense that like they're part of your imagination and other people are interacting with that space and that you can come and interact with other people in that space, like other people's imaginations and you can, and it's a, it's like a fluid, you know? And I mean, it's, it's hard for me to even describe what I learned in that dream. And it was also a very long time ago when I had this dream, but again, it's like a download, you know, you wake up and you're like, wow, I I know, I know in my body and like in my being what that means, you know, but trying to speak those words and like convey that message to somebody else is like really difficult. You know, it's like, it's like a, again, a knowledge beyond words and and images right it's symbolic and so um i didn't really understand that at the time either i was like woke up and i was like that was confusing as hell you know (laughs) but uh over time i've kind of grown to understand um more and more what that message meant um so again dreams you know aren't just the experience it's like living with that experience as you grow into it and really um learning that knowledge um there's you know, a lot of Buddhist uh, sayings are kind of like that too. You know, it's like a short period, a short amount of words to convey a lot of information that sometimes it takes years and years to grow into to really understand that concept, what they're trying to convey to you, you know? Yeah. 
I, we had a, one of my favorite all time episodes was Greg Doyle. And we talked about uh, astral travel and fighting these battles in the astral realm and like lucid yeah. dreaming and all that. I mean, it was unbelievable. And something hit me about that episode. And then we were talking about healing a lot in there too. And, and that night I, uh, my girlfriend was on the couch. She couldn't sleep because she had a, she was majorly plugged up with these sniffles, like, like really bad, really. I could hear them from upstairs. And I woke yeah. up in there in the middle of the night or in the early morning, and I thought, I'm going to try what Greg was suggesting. So I just kind of tried to get back into that, that sort of lucid state. I think I might have woke up lucid, actually. I can't remember now. But I, I tried to get back into that state, and I went downstairs and kind of went underneath her head. Like, I just sort of tried to, like, sort of push this healing, like, up through her head or whatever. And she stopped fucking sniffling. It was the weirdest thing. And I'm like, and then I woke up, I'm like, trying to hear... Did I? And I'm like, how could that be fucking possible? It was, she was going on all that. And I thought, oh, that's so crazy after one of my favorite apps. So there's healing. I mean, it does seem like there's precog potential and healing potential and yeah. shared dreams. I mean, it gets sort of beyond the realm of, of, of what, what we would think possibility. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. It, dang. When you were telling me about that dream, it brought up a lot of stuff. And now, like, my short-term memory is <laughs> wiped <laughs> yeah. out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I've had a, I've had a lot of healing dreams, um, you know, in, in lucid states as well. And um, other things healing me, you know, a guides again, um, kind of working with my body. Um, oh, you were talking about, like, uh, astral wars and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I've had, I've had f few dreams where, you know, um, so it, I've noticed a theme in my dreams is I'm not really like in especially lucid ones. I'm not really active. I'm not take partaking in the dream experience. I'm very, I'm a, like a voyeur. I'm observing what's happening, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of standing out of the sideline. Just like, yeah, I do that okay. too. When I'm, even when I'm lucid, I just let it go sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, like I'll watch like, you know, people and stuff like that. And I'll be like, Oh, I wonder what they're doing. You know, I'm very scientific about in these dreams, you know? And so, um, kind of standing on the sidelines and these people show up and I'm like, what the hell are they doing? You know, like they seem different. They're like flying around and doing all kinds of crazy shit, you know? And I'm like, okay. And so I'm like, Hey, you know, what do you, what are you guys doing here? And they're like, Oh, we're, we're fighting a battle. And I was like, <laughs> what battle, you know, like what? And, and they're like, Oh, there's a war happening. And I was like, and, and we're fighting battles. And I was like, okay. And, and then they just took off, you know, and I was like, all right, you know, and I'm still hanging out with my dream world, you know? And so uh, weeks went by and, and then suddenly I'm in another dream and this lady shows up and she's like battling this, like, uh, like a, it looked like a golem. I, I would say like a giant machine, like being thing, you know? And I was like, I was like, what is going on? You know, again, I'm kind of observing. And she said, Oh, there's a war happening and it's coming. And I was like, okay and she said you're gonna have to decide what side you're on you can't stand on the sidelines anymore wow I was, like, fuck. I was like oh what does that mean you know and so i woke up and you know i told all my friends this i'm like yeah i mean you know my dreams say a war is coming oddly enough like my friends usually believe my dreams more than i do <laughs> and i started noticing that they're like well what's the war gonna be you know i'm like dude i didn't even think about that you know I'm like i'm still stuck on like what the hell is this dream doing you know like this is weird. And, and they're like, well, you know, what's the war? And this is like before COVID and all this stuff started kind of happening. I was like, I don't know, man, but it feels like, you know, war is coming, you know? And I'm definitely like, uh, you know, the sideline person, the, the, uh, my buddy calls it like a fence sitter. You're yeah, like right yeah, in the yeah. middle of the yeah. fence, you know, yeah. and you're trying to decide what side you're on. And, and I like it there, you know, I like being able to kind of play both sides, but, um, in the last year and stuff, you know, I definitely noticed my, myself kind of choosing a side to be on, you know, and wow. whatever that means, you know. And, yeah, that's uh, interesting. Playing my part in, in these dream experiences. Very, um, you know, like uh, I would say like, you know, three or four years ago, I was very materialist, um, scientist, you know, uh, approach to all these things. And in the last few years, it definitely started shifting from that based on, shared dream experiences those kind of really pushed me on those into accepting that dreams are more than just personal psyche experiences they're 
Um, they're shared and, you know, it's a uh, very real in it's the sense around, that it, yeah, yeah. It, it exists. So yeah, yeah. In, in my perspective, anyways, you know, I'll, I think, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, like people are trying to prove things, you know, yeah. like, uh, in the scientific community, as well as like, um, in the podcast community and stuff like that, they're trying, you're really trying to find the science and the truth and stuff, you know, they're like, what is this? And, uh, maybe not you guys, but, <laughs> um, you know, everybody, that's why we talk. We want to know things, you know, and what I've realized kind of through these experiences, it's very personal, you know, like I'm not going to be able to con convince you. I don't think of these things being real or not, you know, you're going to decide for yourself through experiencing it. I'd say, um, you know, people could deny the power of psychedelics or something like that until they really try them. And yeah. then they're like, whoa, you know, like, yeah. this is not what I thought. Yeah. And that goes for UFOs and lucid dreaming yeah, exactly, and astral yeah. travel or OBEs or, I mean, whatever, Sasquatch. I mean, until you experience ah, it. Sasquatch. It, well, yeah. I mean, until you, <laughs> you, you know, it's all, there's a, there's wait, 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 wait. Can you fill us in on your Sasquatch experience? I haven't experienced hey, don't, don't that. Don't deny the Sasquatch, man. I'm in, I'm in near Seattle, so that's a big deal over here, man. Yeah, I'm you sure, know, like Harry I'm and the sure Hendersons, bro. Oh, yeah. Can you get lucid whenever you want? No. I am. I, I would say that'd be very unhealthy, too, but... Um, would it be I, why, why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Because uh, having the ability to lucid dream consistently is... Um, tiring? Doesn't... What's that? Say again? Tiring? Um, well, it's tiring, and, and also, um, it it's a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, I would say a scientist at heart, right? Like, before all this craziness happened in my life, and so I research sleep a lot, and I have friends that are, that have narcolepsy, and I definitely studied narcolepsy quite a bit, and um, if you talk to a person that has narcolepsy, they can lucid dream at will. Most of them can. Wow. Um, yeah, like they have so many lucid dreams it's a problem oh, you know they can't wow, stop that's it so interesting yeah i never knew so that. like cataplexy isn't like if you know what cataplexy is where the person's they essentially just uh hit the ground right like right, right. um they have narcolepsy with cataplexy they're like fully awake and aware and then suddenly just fall down on the ground right uh, most people think those guys are out right like just, they're just gone well they're not they're still conscious but they're lucid dreaming. They're having uh, sleep paralysis, right? And they can't move. They're paralyzed, but they're hallucinating while being awake, right? So they're lucid dreaming while they're awake. They're in hypnogogia, which is like the in-between state, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's very uncomfortable to them, and most of them would wish for anything to have that stop. Holy. So, Meanwhile, so like, meanwhile, there's a bunch of us lying in bed trying to fucking get into that China. state. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not me. Well, um, you know, some some blessings are, um, you know, not blessings for other people. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of these things I realize, you know, um, it's a there's a medium, right? You, you don't want something all the time. You, you, you want to have the experience be special. It happens, you know, sometimes you practice it, you get better at it. And it's not all the time happening uncontrollably, right? Like a person with narcolepsy might have. Yeah. So um, it wouldn't be healthy for me to be able to do that. I would actually con consider myself getting like a sleep study done to make sure that like something else isn't happening to me because, you know, like you want to get um, your sleep cycles when you go to bed and things like that. And, you know, there, there's not a lot of research associated with lucid dreaming and like how rested people are and things like that. So I think there needs to be more research done on that topic before I could say it's okay or not okay. How, you know? how often could you do it if you wanted to then? Um, when I was very scientific about it and practicing daily, I'd say probably around 10 times a month or something like that. Oh, that that's pretty good. A, that's pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, most people that don't, that are really in the community and don't practice a lot. It's around like um, five to three or four times a month, you yeah, know, on yeah. average. Yeah. So, um, but you know, some people are able to do it at will, you know, like my narcoleptic friends and other people that are kind of on the fringe of like mediums and stuff like that. You know, I would say a medium is essentially lucid dreaming all the time that they're experiencing those things, you know, like they, they really believe and they see those things and people would say that they're, possibly asleep you oh, know that's really it's interesting very, yeah 
it's very hard to determine that too. So I, I do um, EEGs for um, a neurologist and, you know, we have patients that come in and I study their EEGs and stuff and, and you're trying to watch them to determine if they're asleep or not. And it's very challenging. It's not just like, okay, you're, you're absolutely, you know, like, boom, you're asleep or anything like that. It's like, um, it's, it's very kind of up for t- interpretation as well as like your experience of how long you've seen people have EEGs and stuff. So I had an EEG done on me to determine like what was going on with me. And uh, um, the person that did it, the person that's been training me, they're like, oh, you you were asleep, you know, the whole time. And I was like, no, I wasn't. Like I could hear everything they were doing. I could, you know, open my eyes if I wanted to. They were like, by all, you know, measures, you were asleep. You're absolutely asleep. And I was like, nope. And it was like instant too. Uh-huh. I was like, it was like five minutes in and I was out according to them, you know? And I was like, no, I was just super relaxed, you know, but it's hard to know, you know, it's really hard to know. But yeah. anyways, long story short, no, I can't listen yeah. <laughs> instantly. But do you have, so what are the tricks? How, how do you have a, a trick to do it? I mean, I can't even remember my dream. So I'm, I, I'm not, <laughs> maybe, not I'm, close. maybe I'm not dreaming or maybe I'm dreaming like a motherfucker and I just can't remember. I yeah, mean, sometimes well, when I do the like back to sleep in the morning thing, I'll sort of remember a dream and I've, you know, bits and pieces here and there. Right. And that's a method for lucid dreaming and back to bed, wake back to bed. Method I got shit to do, it. man. Yeah, I understand. Um, <laughs> well, I focus on the most like uh, easiest and most scientifically proven methods, right? Those are like my go-tos. Right. And the wake back to bed method is one of the most effective methods that you can do. Hand in um, warm water. What's that? Hand in warm water. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. Um, <laughs> I'm not doing anything crazy. I wonder, like, does that work better on the wake back to bed too? Uh, no. If um, I catch ground, there's no, there's no <laughs> hand and water method with wake back to bed, just so you know. But <laughs> you could do whatever you want, but um, I'm not doing that one. Um, I've done a lot of crazy shit, you know, with uh, – hopefully I can say that on this. Uh, oh, yeah. Podcast, oh, yeah. But, I said motherfucker, okay. so we're all – Okay, yeah. You never know with radio and stuff. You um, never know. But I've done some crazy shit with like trying to see what would be most effective with my, you know, dreams. Even like sleeping on the floor for like months oh, at a time, yeah, cool. months yeah. for months. Yeah, yeah. Just like to see what would happen. You know, like wake up, sit there and meditate on a hard floor. Like, you know, sit up straight for like you know forty five hour or whatever, and then see if I could go back to bed. Whatever I could do to like find to try to do this, you know, and really what I found is like the most basic methods are sometimes the best. And, you know, like my, my Buddhist teacher said, keep it simple, stupid, you know, kiss. And so I try to have that as my, uh, um, my saying now, you know, with, uh, these dream experiences. So like the wake back to bed is essentially you go to sleep for a period of time, like four to five hours. So you're, you feel well rested and then you wake up and then you wake up for a period of time, like, 30, 60 minutes. I usually do 60 minutes and then I wake, I go back to bed with the intention to have a lucid dream. That's it. And it's very effective. It's so effective that, um, uh, <laughs> when I was in the military, um, I would always wake up like five in the morning and then go work out for an hour. And then I come home, take a shower and then lay down to take a nap because I, I, I was tired, you know, and I would have like 90% of the time I'd have a lucid dream oh just from God, that. Wow. And it was so like consistent that I was, I was, I'd be like, I'm guaranteed to have this experience. So I better plan on what I'm going to do when I'm in it. You know, I haven't been effective like that since, since that time, because I'm not waking my ass up at five in the morning, going working out for an hour, you know, like yeah. I'm lazy. So, um, but I know, you know, I, I, I did it since I got out, I was like, well, I'll go to the, I'll do it one more time to see, you know, like, or I really wanted to be see if it would work still for me, if it was like something I grew out of. So I went to yoga at like five in the morning, whatever, did yoga for an hour and then came home, did the same thing. It worked a hundred percent, you know, wow. but I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, I don't want to wake up and go work out, you know, like this, yeah. this, there's gotta be something better, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so I kind of, you know, I, I, it's easy, it works, but it's a pain in the butt and nobody likes to work for the shit that they get, you know, including me. So it's like, um, I'd rather try something else, but that's one of the best methods is wake back to bed. And then the other one is like the mild technique. It's like 
mnemonic induced lucid dreaming and the name's like really complex but it just essentially is kind of the same thing as wake back to bed but there's an interesting like thing in there that most people don't really get with mild and if you read it on the internet people leave it out so this was created by Stephen LeBerg, the same guy you read the book about. Yep. And he used this technique to train his people to be able to lucid dream in studies that he was conducting. And it was very effective. And he, he actually has the data to show how effective it is, too. And you can look it up online. But uh, what happens is when you when you wake up from a dream, he had his subjects recall what the dream was, right? So you're actively remembering what the dream you just had was if you can remember it right and then you're um you imagine that last dream as if you were lucid right so say like um trying to find a random you know idea of a dream i could have but uh, well like i had one i had one like the other night where there was a giant in a, a, a giant in the room with yeah, the, okay. you know, he was only wearing shorts and uh, he, woke, he woke up and I knew I had to get away. So I tried to run out of the house and try and get away from him. And I, I couldn't run outside. I was, I was oh, okay. stuck. And then he came That's outside perfect. and then I ended up like making friends with him or something like what that. I don't know. But if I was lucid, I would have like done something totally different. What yeah. So hmm? bottom. Maybe pulled out my sword or something. Was he wearing a shirt? There you go. He had a sword? No, I, I didn't have a sword on me. Did he? <laughs> but I would have I would have manifested a sword or an axe or something. There you Did go. He have a shirt on? Or to cast a spell or something. I would have done something funky like that. You know? So funky. you know, you would uh if you woke up from that dream in the middle of the night or something like that, right? You would go, Okay, you know, this is what's happening in the dream. I was running from the giant guy, and if I was lucid, I would manifest a sword and then I, you know, kill him or whatever, right? And so you're thinking about that at the same time as you're going back to sleep with the intention that your next dream is going to be lucid. So you're actively thinking about those two things at the same time as you fall asleep. And that should be like the last thing that you think about when you actually fall asleep. So he uh, he shows the data on it. It's super effective, right? Wow. Yeah. So wake back to bed and that one, the mild, are by all means like and statistically shown to be the most effective methods out there there may be more effective methods out there that i don't know about yeah. and people you know um can use those or whatever but it i haven't seen any data on them so i don't really know how effective they are besides people just saying oh this is effective for me you know yeah. and everyone's different so you know you may use a technique that i don't know about or one other ones that i do know about and it may be more effective for you and you should use that and not, then, yeah I'm talking about. and then there's also things that make them more effective like the training through the day like if you continue to say, "Am I dreaming? Am I what? What's what? what are you, is this all coming back?" <laughs> I, I remember from when you were like turning on switches. Yeah, the light like, switch. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You go into a room, you turn the light switch, and then and then in your dream, yeah, it won't check. Grab yeah. shutting and off then, lights at work. Then, just like dream. really, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, reality checks are very effective in that sense that like they're kind of checking reality to make sure they're not breaking you know reality's not breaking because that happens in a dream but sometimes like um what i notice with reality checks is also like just doing the reality check also brings lucidity into the dream so like i'll be like oh look at my hands am i dreaming am i dreaming yeah, you know yeah. and then i go into i go to sleep and next thing you know like i'm in the dream and i go i'm dreaming yeah you know, i never looked at my hands I never did any of that stuff. I'm just go, Oh, I'm dreaming. Yeah. So like the action itself of like asking yourself, am I dreaming and bringing awareness into your daily life, not just your night life, you know, yeah. can transfer over into like, say, you know, am I dreaming, you know? Yeah. So, uh, dream journaling is also yeah. incredibly effective. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. I used to try and write them down, but honestly, by the time I try to read my scribbles and I couldn't get enough of it out, right. I try to write yeah. it down, but by the time I've written a sentence, like the whole couple paragraphs in my head that I wanted to write about. So I started using the voice notes in the phone and having that available, yeah. like having that open so that I just have to get my phone open. And then the voice notes is there. I click record. Maria and then just. With that? No, I haven't done it in a while. I'm okay. asking like if that's still effective. Like I used yeah. to do that, and I had a whole bunch of cool dreams in my phone. Like because you, even though you're in the sleepy voice, but you'd be like, "Yeah, I woke up. The giant woke up. And he's chasing me down the hall." Like you'd, you'd say all <laughs> then that, you just right? Hear, then, Shut up. Go back to bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but do yeah, you think that's a, that's effective even just by voice instead of the act of writing yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Any any 
recall. Yeah, like you're yeah. just trying to recall, train, right? Train the recall. A lot of this then, shit's yeah. like memory based. So like, yeah. um, my short term and long term memory are horrible, right? But like, the more I work on that, the more I recall my dreams, right? So any type of memory recall of that kind of like experience is going to be helpful for you. Even yeah. if like you did something that was very mundane during the day and tried to like run through your day and recall it, you know, before going to bed and things like that, those are going to be effective for you and oh, like that's interesting. ability to recall, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're trying to like improve your memory. Um, and also like the, you know, like um, I would say like the ritual associated with like writing down your dreams and stuff like that, you're you know, your, your consciousness isn't really just something that just turns off. you right. It's constantly washing you. It's constantly aware of like the environment. So like the more energy you give to something, it's going to really notice the energy that you apply to that thing yeah. and make it important. Right. Yes, so like, totally if you're like that. focused on uh podcast all the time, right. Then your dreams are going to be associated with like podcasts and stuff. Right. But if you, uh, associate yourself with like trying Giants. to recall your your yeah. experiences in life and memories and dreams and stuff like that and you really spend time and energy in that and your dreams will like express themselves in that way it'll kind of meet you halfway you know sometimes more so sometimes it won't meet you even more so wow. the more energy you put into something the more you get back from those type of experiences right when i was a so, kid oh go ahead uh, I was going to say, like, if, I don't know if you guys are cannabis users or either. Or well, I like smoke that, weed but... like a motherfucker. I'm high right yeah. now. So <laughs> I was going to get to that question next. But when I was a kid, I used to and get I lucid, lucid once in a while. You know, every time when it was, is I dream I was peeing. Oh, interesting. And I'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's not And then I'd wake up and I'd be bed. peeing in the bed every fucking time. When I was That's why you don't dream anymore because you got trauma from got, peeing in your yeah, bed. Yeah, right? pee in the bed again. So now I don't dream and I don't get. I mean, I get odd little glimpses. Is that from smoking weed? Yeah, cannabis. Uh, I mean, I use cannabis too um, because I get headaches and stuff. Um, so I use cannabis, and if I'm going to use cannabis, I, I pretty much can guarantee I won't recall nearly as many dreams. You know, like if you took a break from cannabis, you're going to get like a sudden large dump of dreams right shortly after and i'm not sure if you've ever taken a break or not but <laughs> how um, long of a break like a couple of hours or a couple of days you know like a day or two no I'll see what I can... well not in a while i've been trying yeah. to get him to do that for dreaming for not for dreaming. years years ago when i was on the when i was on harder stuff i used to take breaks all the time now i just smoke yeah. my weed and that's it live my life yeah yeah, I mean, um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong break. with that, but the problem is, is you're just not going to have the recall that you generally get. The dreams are still happening. Like, um, there was some, there's a doctor on Joe Rogan that uh, was talking about dreams and stuff like that. And he was, he was telling, he was saying something about cannabis, and he was like saying all the shit about cannabis about like it stopping REM essentially, like completely reducing REM to zero. And I was like, no, that that is an absolute false statement because it, it doesn't rem never stops you if you stopped having rem in your your sleep you go insane like you start hallucinating while you're awake that's how the brain works so like cannabis it i still get dreams right but they're harder to recall so i'm still dreaming every single night they're just harder to recall and so if you can't stop using cannabis you can start working on recalling things better and one thing i thought about cannabis that is kind of cool is it's kind of a memory um improvement drug in a way like even though it makes you forget shit right but like if you could use it as a tool right you could you could use it and then while you're you know intoxicated or high you could recall things throughout your day right and improve your memory and then when you sober up that muscle, I think memory works like a lot like a muscle. So you're like built, you're like putting the weights on, right? And you're just like lifting all this heavy weight with your memory. And then when you're sober, like your memory is just like, boom, you know? So, um, Fuck yeah, use it as a performance enhancer for memory. Yeah. I'm pretty I enhanced think, already. I don't <laughs> want to take the scales too I much. I mean, I, I know a lot of people that are really good, you know, taking tests and recalling shit. Um, that were stoners when I was a kid, you know, I never used weed or anything, but these people are like sometimes like superhuman and like the amount of shit that you can recall, you know, when they're s sober, you know, and it's like, 
how are you doing this? You know, I can't remember anything. (laughs) And, and they're like, dude, I just smoke weed, man. I'm always high. And I'm like, what? Like, how does these two things make sense? They're like idiots. But at the same time, they're like smart, you know, it's like, what is happening? So I think a lot of it's associated with this, um, you know, memory muscle almost that you're able to like, um, kind of, kind of work it out. Um, another thing about cannabis, like most people don't probably know is it's like really good for Alzheimer's and stuff like that. So, um, people with dementia, like cannabis users probably have a (laughs) much lower chance of getting dementia, which is related to memory, obviously, and stuff like that. So, um, that's a plus, right? Yeah, yeah. So totally dementia is the number one killer in Alberta. Wow. Oh. So have you experienced sleep other paralysis than COVID, at all? Of course. Other than COVID, yeah. It used to be it used to be <laughs> used to be dementia. <laughs> now it's <laughs> yeah, now it's COVID. COVID slash dementia. Uh, probably a mixture, right? Yeah, yeah. Um Comancha. Yeah, I, I, I one thing that you know uh people really don't really talk a lot about uh is sleep paralysis. I, re- I wrote about it in my book um too, because I felt like it would be unjust for me to warn people of these experiences because oftentimes they're pretty traumatic. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, they could be terrifying if you don't know what the hell's going on and they can be terrifying regardless, but it at least helps you a little bit. If you kind of know like what's happening, what you may encounter and how to kind of overcome that a little bit. Um, so I, I have had, um, sleep paralysis, um, and my sleep paralysis, my first experience of sleep paralysis led into me having, uh, out of body experiences. So, um, you know, the, the there's, some positive that can come out of that. Right. And is that uh, like trying me, to disassociate from the trauma kind of thing or, um, well, I think, uh, you know, if you've ever read into like, um, uh, God, who is the guy named there? My memory goes again, man. Um, if you try to, uh, man, Which guy you think Steiner, it, yeah, there he is. Right, right. if you're in the Rudolf Steiner's work, he talks about, uh, the, um, the guardian and the gateway, um, or the threshold the guardian of the threshold. And, um, you know, I think the, his idea associated with that probably is to me, the best one is that it's not so much the trauma that is the experience of going, you know, having you have these out of body experiences, even though like sometimes it's associated with that, but, uh, seemingly anyways, the experience of working through a terrifying experience is actually what brings awareness to it and allows you to have these unique experiences versus the trauma. So trauma is like, um, I've noticed as well as some other people have noticed that trauma is associated with having out of body experiences, right? Like in lucid dreams, like oftentimes people or even alien abductions and stuff, you know, like the trauma is associated with these people and you're trying to like figure out why, but a lot of these people have worked through their trauma too. Like, it's not so much the trauma itself that's allowing them to have these experiences. Those people have had trauma, and then they've worked on it to the point that they're, like, okay with the trauma to the point that they're normal-ish, you know? So, like, I grew up in a pretty traumatic uh, experience with my dad, and I think through working through that, it kind of allowed me to um, start having these experiences because it's like a a higher level of awareness, right? You, you, if you can see trauma for what it is and pain and suffering and stuff like that for what it is, and you can kind of work with it as like a, almost like a force versus like this hard thing that is never really going to move. And like, you're just stuck in it, you know, forever. If you can work through that, then you can kind of see like reality and like these experiences for what they are. And I think, bringing in that awareness kind of gets you to a different maybe level or something, or be able to see a little bit through the veil that other people can't see, you know? Yeah. So, um, the sleep paralysis experience that I had was very traumatic, but, um, when I finally worked through it, that's when the, you know, the gateway opened up, you know, like I was able to have these experiences and, no, it didn't stop, you know, like the sleep paralysis continued over and over and over again in different forms, as well as like the beings and characters and the encounters that I had in the paralysis. Wow. They changed and they sometimes were more uh, traumatic, you could say in some ways, but through engaging with that and not like the first time that I worked through that, 
um, I brought that with me, right? It didn't like, it wasn't like starting over. It was like, now I, I stepped up a, a step, you know, and I'm stepping and I'm stepping, I'm stepping, and I'm getting to uh, higher points of like experience, right? Like um, the trauma is kind of building, but it's not so hard now, you know, I'm working through it. And as I engage with that, those experiences, I'm able to not suffer as much, you know, and then um, pass on to another experience, you know? So I, I don't necessarily see those experiences as like, um, I don't know how to describe it. I, I would say, I would say those experiences are more like training situations almost versus like real traumatic things. Right. And it's, I would almost say that physical reality is the same way. Like, even though, you know, some people really suffer a lot, you know, and that's hard for me to like justify it through me just saying, Hey dude, you got to work through it. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, your whole family died, you know, but you got to just work through it. You know, that's, that's not for me to say for them. Right. They, that's their experience that they need to, they can engage with and figure out themselves how they're going to work with that. Right. But for every experience that I've ever had in my personal life that have been traumatic or whatever, if I can look at those things as learning experiences for me to pass on through and to grow from, then they lead to something else. Right. And, you know, I, I tend to think that these things are all interconnected in a way like uh, the dream world is a uh, interconnected to reality and they're kind of, uh, they, they have the same symbols and the same structure and the same, you know, themes and stuff like that. So you can kind of like see one for the other, you know, like the dream world operates like this and it's kind of like a analogy of the waking world, you know, like you could say like the matrix movie is like, um, kind of an analogy for our reality in a way, you know, a lot of people do that. They bring up the matrix to like, Oh, we're in a simulation, man, you know, stuff like that. And I'd say, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's a metaphor for reality, right? It doesn't mean that it's like that, but it's a metaphor. And the same thing goes for a dream world. It's like, these are metaphorical experiences of waking reality. So you can see the connection connection and work through it and work with it, you know? Yeah. It's all about like bringing awareness to your life, you know? Yeah. So what about uh, some of your UFO experiences then? Did they overlap with the dreams in the military? <laughs> Was that like legit military UFO experiences or? Yeah. Um, I mean, I had a, I had a UFO experience before I was uh, in the military as a kid um, with a friend. He saw it too. And um, the interesting part about that was that I imagined um, I was in a, it was late at night and I was sleeping outside and I imagined an airplane hitting my house before it happened. Oh, wow. And it's just like an image appeared in my mind that this, you know, it's like a 737 or whatever just smacked into my house and it blew up to pieces. And I was like, you know, just sitting there, I was like, wow, that's a weird idea, you know? And it was like out of the blue, you know, you get those, you probably get those uh, images sometimes when you're getting ready to sleep, wherever you're like, Whoa, what was that? And so it was kind of like that. And, uh, so I'm sitting there and thinking about this airplane hitting my house. And then I look in the distance and there's like a light, you know, and I'm like, Oh, you know, it's probably an airplane because I lived kind of near an airport. And so I'm watching this light and it gets get closer and closer to my house. And I'm like, Oh, you know, that's a little closer than normal and keeps on coming. And I'm like, all right, getting a little worried now, you know, I'm like, was my dream, you know, trying to tell me that an airplane is going to hit my house. You know, I'm like starting to think about that and keeps getting closer. And I'm like, okay, you know, and I got to a point where it was getting so close that like I became paralyzed. Right. Like I didn't really associate like the paralysis that I maybe was even in, but I became paralyzed with fear that I couldn't even get up and tell my parents, you know, like this thing, I'm like, I dreamed this and now it's happening in front of me and I can't do anything about it because I can't move. You know, I'm so scared. And it, it lasted for a couple seconds. And then, you know, I kind of came to, and I see this light, I'm still looking at it. And then it takes off straight up in the air, like, um, straight up. And it went so fast and so far that it curved over the horizon. And so the summer, like that summer, it was summertime. And, and that summer, I I went to Florida and watched the space shuttle take off. 
and it did the exact same thing. You know, the space shuttle took off and then it, you could watch it curve over the horizon, you know, and then it disappears and you're like, all right, it's in space now, you know, and this UFO did the exact same thing. Uh, um, one thing though, it, it didn't make a sound. It was completely silent and it didn't have any type of fire coming out of it. You know, like, uh, um, the space shuttle looks like a candlestick. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. it's, and it's loud and like, and it was further away from me than this orb thing was right. And this light. And so like, I'm like, Whoa, what was that? You know? And I'm sitting there and my friend was outside with me, you know, he's asleep. I thought, and I'm like, well, I'm not telling him what I just saw, you know, like he's going to think I'm crazy. And, um, and then he said, he's like, what the fuck was that? And I was like, dude, I don't know, man. And so, you know, fast forward like 20 years and I reached out to him, you know, I was like, I hadn't talked to him since you're really. And I'm like, Hey dude, you remember that shit? You know? Cause like, you guys know my memory's trash essentially. So I wanted to like verify what the hell I saw. And he's like, yeah, that, that was the most profound thing he's ever seen in his life today. You know? And I'm like, damn, man. Um, so, you know, I really kind of, I didn't really talk about it after for, you know, until like maybe a couple of years ago, I didn't really think it was very important um, to people um, for some reason, you know, like you kind of just, I don't know, you kind of forget about things. You don't really talk about weird experiences like that. Um, and, you know, I kind of thought about that and it's like um, the association with the imagination and this experience that I had with this UFO object, you know, and like maybe that somehow is connected together and then dreams too, you know, and I'm not really sure, you know, I can't really put those things together completely, but I know that they operate on the same thing, you know, like I dreamed something was coming into, you know, my into my reality, it was going to interact with me in some way. My imagination put the image of an airplane, you know, hitting my house, very traumatic experience, you know, and that UFO, even though like it was only a couple seconds really, or a couple minutes, I guess, happened, you know, it's like, it changed my life, you know, but in a way that was different than normal things. Most things that are life changing, you talk about, you're like, Oh my God, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. these things have changed my life completely. Um, so fast forward, you know, in, I'm in the military and it's actually, you know, um, I wish I had dates and stuff, you know, of everything that yeah. has happened in me yeah. during that time, but it's probably associated. It's about the same time I had started having sleep paralysis too. But, um, I was in a, on the, I was in Virginia and I'm on the military base there in Oceana, which is like an F-18 squad, like a big F-18 place, right? They have a bunch of jets there. And and I, I go inside. I'm a, I'm a electrician, so I work on airplanes at that time. And I go inside to get some tools, and I come out, and, like, all my buddies are like, dude, did you see that? And I was like, see what, you know? And they're like, oh, this airplane flew over the base, and it landed in the trees. And I was like, What? And they're like, yeah, I didn't, they're, all these guys are like pilots themselves. Right. And like they're pilots or they work on planes or they fly for commercial airplane airliners and stuff. And they're like, yeah, it didn't have FAA lights on and it landed in the trees. And like, there's no runway there. There's no nothing in those trees. Right. And I was like, that's fucking weird, dude. You know? And they're like, yeah, it's crazy. And there's probably like 15 people out there that saw this thing. They're all talking about it, you know? And I'm like, all right. And also like, so it's New Year's Eve. And so the base is completely shut down. I work night shifts. So it's probably like one to two in the morning at this point. And it's flooded too. The whole entire base is flooded out. I had to take my boots off and my, and roll up my pants to get through to work because it was so flooded out. I couldn't even drive my car there. So no one's on this base besides these like guys with me. Right. And, and like a gate guard. And so I'm like, well, that was weird. So I didn't see it. And I'm, you know, we're, we're done for the night. We're packing up and stuff. We're walking out and this gate guard, he's like, yeah, I saw the UFO, you know, and all this stuff. And he's just like some you know, young guy that's like, he's just, you know, some MP guy. And he's like, yeah, I saw the UFO, man. I saw it fly over and everyone's talking about it. And he's like, what the hell's that? And he's like, puts his <laughs> finger up, you know, we're like, and I look up and it was this giant thing dude i don't even like i try to describe to people what it was it I, I describe it as like a giant trash bag right but it it was a semi-translucent object 
that had to be at least um you know a mile if not two miles in diameter it was as big as the base like it was slowly floating over the base it was enormous like huge and it, it was so big that you could see like the base lights like the base is still lit and it was shining lights up into on this object and it was reflecting off into the sky like as if you had like shirt shirts lights on it you know and you're just like it was and massive and i was just like what the hell is that you know we're just watching this thing and it's just slowly hover you know floating over this base and then it just eventually you know it it just disappeared you know it kept going yeah. and i was like i don't know what to do you know like silent? i don't know what to do about that silent yeah completely silent. Yeah, no, course, no sound right? nothing no sound. and i was like all right and and then i got my car you know, I drove home, went to sleep, and <laughs> came back the next day, and nobody, nobody even talked about it. Like Fuck, it's no crazy, one mentioned eh? it. No like, missing time. I didn't time, think no. about it. Yeah. What's that? No missing time or anything like that. Not, I mean, nothing that I could think of. Jeez. You know, and just nobody, nobody thought about it. No one cared. You what, know, what base was that at? Uh, it was in Oceana in Virginia. Oh wow. Jeez, yeah, that's crazy. Virginia, baby. I love those. I love those uh, sightings of the massive. Like you don't hear that many of them that see the mass. Like there's the yeah. big, big black triangles and some of those right. ones. But, but to see those massive, like city size ones, is is right. Oh, that's incredible. Swamp yeah. gas. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the people that are like, oh, these are drones, you know, and all yeah. this stuff. It's yeah. like, okay, you know, like the little object, you know, eh, it could be a drone, maybe, you know, whatever. Um, I'll give them that, you know, but it's like. No, nah, like no one's, you know, no one's building a mile diameter aircraft floating around, you know, and like nobody sees it, you know, yeah. it's like, no, like that, that's not possible, man. Like if it was, if that thing landed like in a city or something, it would cover the city. Like yeah. if it was a trash bag that it kind of looked like, you know, it would cover the entire city of Virginia, like, or not Virginia, Ocean, uh, yeah. Virginia beach, you know, yeah. like the whole entire city would be covered. It's like, it's not an accident, you know, like. But, you know, it was just, I didn't really think about it after that, you know, for a long time, too. It's just like, these things are so massive in your mind, you just can't really comprehend them, you know? It's not something you can really have a conversation with people and be like, yeah, like, I just saw this thing, you know? And they're like, okay, what do I do with that, you know? Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm like you, I'm on the fence about all that stuff. Like, I had a crazy sighting, too, and I just, I don't know if it was E.T. or... Secret space right. program or high black project stuff. It doesn't. I don't even know. It could be anything. It could be anything. I yeah. just. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've definitely seen like um, I've had alien encounters in my um, sleep paralysis, um, orb encounters in my sleep paralysis. You know. Yeah. And I've read studies on people that have had. Um, they continually get abducted. You know, and they go into sleep labs. And they study them why the abductions are happening. They say, well, you're in sleep paralysis. That's why you feel like you're abducted. You know, like it matches pretty accurately to them not being able to move. And then like they're visited by some weird thing and then they have all this stuff happen to them. And it's like, yeah, you know, like I would have an alien adoption, you know, type dream. And I'd be like, oh, you know, like I was in sleep paralysis. So it's just me dreaming it. You know, I'm hallucinating this experience, you know, but anymore, I'm like, Oh, you know, like I kind of go back through that. I'm like, oh, maybe there's more to that, you know, like <laughs> exactly. maybe that is actually uh, some type of being or something like doing something to me. Um, there's a book um, by Eliot. It's like it's called Shamanism uh, Ecstasy, I think, and or ex Ecstatic. Uh, anyways, um, it's a I think it's a well done book on cross cultural shamanistic type experiences and initiations and there's a chapter in chapter four it talks about these initiation experiences through cross cross-cultural um experiences and uh he goes into these like these similarities essentially between all these different cultures that he studied and a lot of them talk about like abduction experiences in sleep you know and out-of-body experiences essentially where they're either taken up or or dragged down to the ground, you know, and into the earth, and then they're taken apart and put stuff into them, and then they're reassembled, and then they come back as a shaman, you know. And I've read many people's cases on sleep paralysis in like um, public forums and stuff, and many of them speak about the exact same thing, where yeah. they they have these uh, um, sleep paralysis type experiences, they're reassembled, and then uh, or taken apart, reassembled, and put stuff in them, you know, 
and sometimes they're alien like and sometimes they're not so yeah i i often wonder if if those experiences are colored by our awareness of what uh the latest kind of cultural thing is like in the past it might have been although some people still have like shadow man encounters or demonic sort of things right. but it feels like it was a religious thing and then now and there's the little fairies and there's the whole like sort of more fantasy kind of realm of that and then the old hags and the and now it's now it's kind of et almost because we're sort of more modern and technologically advanced it's like our consciousness goes to like somehow our consciousness is playing a role in that and and that being or that you know maybe if it is a being it's coming up in different uh different forms depending on what what our fears yeah. are what our fears are or what our culture says is possible or who knows yeah i mean uh you know turn it back into like dreams i think i mean i think ufo um uh, experiences and shaman shamanistic uh uh, initiations are associated with dream experiences too. And that's not to discredit them at all. I think that they're very real. Um, and I think they're more real sometimes than even what we call reality, you know? Um, but in the, in these, um, these experiences, I think what I've noticed in, um, in my experiences, as well as other people's experiences that I've I've asked them to do certain experiments in lucid dreams and stuff. We started noting, noticing patterns, like a structural type pattern to these things. And it kind of reminds me of like a analogy of putting, um, building a house, right? Like there's a structure, the wood structure and everything, the foundation, it's all there, but then you put like a wallpaper, you know, you put wallpaper on the house, like the inter interior to make it look different. Right. And I think a lot of dream images are wallpaper, on our experiences, right? But deep down inside, the structure is all the same. We're seeing the same thing or we're experiencing the same thing, but it's presented to us in a way that makes sense to us. So like, um, you know, people will be like, well, you're, you're dreaming about the things that you're doing throughout the day. You know, it's like, absolutely I am, you know, that would make sense. But it's the dream meeting me. It's saying, hey, here's an image that you, it seems that you're relating this to your life. You know, it's important to you. And I will present you this image with an underlying structure of this. So you're getting the message, you know? So it's like, uh, you know, if it was an alien technology, that'd probably be the best way to communicate. Right. Um, you know, like, uh, there was the, the movie arrival, uh, as a very good, um, I think it's very well done for like, uh, if you look at it from a dream perspective and symbols and images and stuff, she's she's having memories that haven't happened to her, you know. And they also talk about like the language and the symbols that they're using and how she's engaging with these symbols and it's creating, it's changing, changing her reality. And she mentions that in in the movie. And if you kind of look at that as a dream experience, it kind of opens up um, this realm a little bit to be like yeah, okay, these symbols are more than just like an image. They're actually a way of living and being. And if I engage with them, they'll change how I see things, you know, change my actual world around me. So I think dreams do have structure to them in that sense, you know, and so do like the alien encounters and all that stuff. I think they're um, very structured and there's commonalities. And if we look at those commonalities and those structures, we'll learn something very profound, I think. Yeah. Have you talked to any of those guys from your base at all in that experience since then? And when, when was that one? How long ago was that? Uh, that was uh, around 2006, I'd say. Oh, okay. And yeah. I, I really haven't, um, yeah. I don't, I, oddly, I don't recall who was there, you know, like that night, maybe one guy I, I could ask him. Um, I think he was around, but it was so weird, you know, like, um, we just didn't really talk about it. Yeah. It was like, um, just kind of, you know, forgotten about and, it, you know, I noticed that between those two encounters, I don't think a lot of people have multiple, you know, UFO encounters, but, um, you know, from other people's experiences, I've heard that kind of a loss of time, a loss of that memory, you know, and, um, you know, me memory is a really interesting thing, you know, like um, trying to remember something you know, from 2006 as if it was today is a very challenging thing. You know, it's hard enough for me to remember yesterday as if it was today, you know, yeah. and the things that change in those memories too, um, you know, that living, it's like a living memory, right? So my experiences in life and stuff infect almost that memory and change it into something that it wasn't. So, um, 
it's it's hard to recall you know it yeah. may be even almost impossible for some of those people to recall what they've they experienced yeah yeah it's fascinating mine was burned in my like i feel like it, i burned it in when it happened i was like just burning it into my mind and I, I my memory is more about what i burned into my mind than the actual event in a way you know I've, yeah. I, have, I have a narrative around what happened you know and that's just seems to yeah. me it seems to me it's always stayed the same but i think it could be maybe it is a little fluid you know depending on how i tell it or how right. i remember it and yeah, I, con I, mean, I contacted friends about it and uh, oh, yeah? and they didn't even they're like Nobody the two cared. kiwi girls and they're like oh it's just i chalked it up to too much beer or something but i can't <laughs> get a hold of the guy that i the guy from the uk who was with me when it happened and he uh him and I t definitely talked a lot about it. I mean, we told our our uh, kibbutz one of the one of our bosses on the Israeli kibbutz about it, and he and he was just laughing as all oh, UFOs aren't real, and we're like, we saw oh, it ourselves, geez. and so, anyways. Yeah, I think it's funny that um, you know, people try to there's still debate about UFOs. You know, <laughs> I know, like I, know. I I don't understand that. I mean, I was in the military. I went. I was on the Nimitz. You know, not during the time that those that those events happened, but I know those types of people, you know, like F-18 pilots, they're essentially 20 years in, you know, they know how to fly planes. They know the systems very well. I know like the chiefs, you know, like the, the guy that was, uh, he was operating the, the radar system, the Aegis radar system on the, um, the cruiser, you know, I know those people. I've had friends that, um, operated those ships, you know, they know the systems very well. And, there's no way that like those people are just all lying you know, like yeah. or don't know what they're talking about it's like yeah. you guys are ridiculous so i don't I, you know it's like again for me it's not a um it's a i'm not debating with those people you know it's like i don't have anything to prove to those people about what i experienced i don't have anything to prove about my dream experience you know there's still people that would debate about lucid dreams and yeah. if people can even have them yeah. you know or if dreams are just random noise you know it's like I'm not here to prove no, that to you. That's, that's exactly your job, where, dude. dude. That's where we exactly where we ended up, or at least yeah. I did in the show. It's like I don't have experienced enough things and talked to enough people that have experienced things. Like I'm not trying to prove to anybody. There's evidence yeah. if you want to look for it. There's evidence all over the place for this stuff. Make up your right, own mind yeah. after you do. That's, I mean, yeah. I was into proving stuff too, you know, big yeah, time. So yeah. I understand where they're coming yeah, from. Yeah. But it's like you get to a point and you're like, okay, I have to kind of, I either have to accept this as real or i'm i just have to live an illusion you know i like, wonder if that was the battle that you had to i wonder if it was yeah. a spiritual battle like it was like you got to join the side of like open-minded kind of inquiry i i absolutely agree that that was part of it i don't i i personally don't think that things just operate on one level you know so like um that what you're talking about operates all the way down, you know, like the, the Buddhist would say, it's like turtles all the way down, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's because it, it affects everything. It's all the way down. So yeah. once you kind of cross over that line of seeing things in a different way, it's not just going to affect your, like the spiritual battle you, you talk about. It's like all the way down into every part of your being, you yeah. know? And so it's a it's a massive shift in perspective. I see the importance of both sides, you know, as a fence sitter, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I can see a little bit of both sides, and I definitely lean to one side more than the other still, you know, and I struggle with that. But at the same time, I I, I see that, um, you know, it's, it's for me to accept and explore, you know, uh, my dreams. I'm not interested in proving anything really anymore. I'm more interested in understanding, you know, and learning and being like in listening versus like telling, you know, how it is. So, um, hmm. you know, yeah, I get it. Hey, uh, we should probably get it wrapped up here. Hey, eh, Darren, uh, do you have any other questions or no, I'm we can wrap it up. Yeah, I think <laughs> we had. To, I think we all kind of had to uh, have a bit of a stop here. So, what do you what do you got going on next? I mean, what uh, what for, as far as in this sort of category of uh, interesting things? Um, well, right now, I'm just, I mean, just my book is being released in uh, May on May fourth. So, oh, it's not even it's not even out yet. Yeah, May the fourth be with you. Oh, I didn't pick awesome. that day, so. Um, <laughs> My publisher picked that day randomly, I guess, supposedly randomly. Um, so that's the main thing. Um, 
can people I, I pre-order like, it at all or can people what's that can people pre-order it at yeah. all yeah yeah they can go to luciddreambook.com or wow. tailleaders.com yeah, yeah. tailleaders is a little bit harder to remember yeah i'll put it in um, the show notes either way yeah so they can go to either of those i'll send you guys the link um and they can pre-order off my website off of amazon or off the publisher's site and if they pre-order off my website um they get like a necklace i made for the book and some other stuff let me guess cool. in the shape of a tail eater or a boros? yeah it's actually yeah. it's pretty cool man yeah. so um i designed it myself and everything cool and um so i give it to people i i don't sell that really i give it to people that have helped me so i consider people that um pre-order my book kind of helping me out you know yeah, so i totally. give it to people that help me and so you can't like buy my necklace you know yeah. so it's a little okay. special i think cool um but uh yeah, that's pretty much all I'm working on right now. Um, I work with people online and talk about like uh, symbols and like um, kind of the occult stuff and like religion and spiritual spiritual stuff and kind of still trying to figure it out with them. They're really great people. It's a super small group, but um, they seem to be pretty cool. And you can join those those groups by just going to the my website and going to discussions. There's like four different groups in there that you can join. And talk with some pretty experienced people, especially on the Facebook page. Like there's a, uh, there's about 600 people in there, and I add a, personally add a lot of those people in there. Um, they're people that I really truly believe that are really capable of having lucid dream experiences. They're not just like uh, random people, you know. And um, so they're great, but really, you know, like most of my focus is just kind of on my own personal experiences and trying to uh, work with them anymore versus like trying to research and know yeah, things yeah, yeah. and cool. tell people tell people what i think you know yeah so i don't i don't have an intention to write another book or anything like that yeah, yeah. so no that's great man i mean it's this has been a, a blast it's flown by and it's just a it's super interesting topics and uh, man we should do it again and get into some of the occult and symbolism about other things and I mean, yeah we could i'd go on love, for love a long to talk time. about that yeah. man yeah, it's so, been fun. It has been great. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, no I problem. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll put links in the show notes and stuff, and we'll keep in touch. All right, sounds good. Okay, buddy. You have a great okay, day. Man. Guys, have a good night. Bye. Night. Bye. And that was a chat. What'd you think, buddy? Oh, dude, we didn't even have time to get into the the lucid dreaming supplements and how to get yourself out of sleep paralysis. I mean, this is one of those shows I had a million questions still at the, the end. lucid dreaming yeah, supplements for like work? almost an hour. Yeah, I had a couple crazy dreams the other night. I was oh, they're working for you now. Oh, I just tried. I was well. We had this guy scheduled for a while, and then uh, and uh, I thought I'd try some of the lucid dreaming supplements. So you got lucid, or you just had a dream? I had some a little bit of crazy dreams. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. Well, it's a kinda, crazy dream, yeah, but, or you were lucid? No, but sometimes I'm kind of lucid, but I don't really get lucid. I just sort of watch it happen. I, can I you just, be kind of lucid? Yeah, you can be semi lucid. I think that's can my you? yeah yeah. You just let mm -hmm. it go. You don't you don't want to control anything. You just you're there for. You're there to just to watch, like he kind of like. So you know saying. you're dreaming, though. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Sometimes I just like the adventure. Hmm. It's a big adventure. Sometimes they're huge, dude. They go on forever. Like it feels like days. I think you've been playing too much Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> too much podcasting about giants. <laughs> What's his website called again? Taileaders. That's his main website. Yeah, that's where the link to the Facebook page and all that stuff is. You bet. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, Taileaders.com slash discussion perfect i'll put all that in the show notes it was fun man i'd like to uh yeah let's see if he uh see if he, he's gonna put this out in audiobook first it's gonna come out as a book i guess let it come out as a book first yeah <laughs> did you read it already though? i did yeah it was fantastic so you it got it was on it was honestly a really no no he sent me the pdf Actually, do you know it was like it was like the original books that we read on loose streaming, but it's way better, way deeper. It was like a super uh, deep Who was condensed. It? Robert or not Wagner, condensed. Back yeah, in Robert the day. Wagner and uh, Stephen LeBurge. Yeah, we had Stephen LeBurge. No, but we, had, but, we but his book it was based on his book. I remember yeah. Wagner. Wagner on. came on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, big thanks to Lee for coming on the show. Check out his stuff. Pre-order his book. Get the cool necklace. Big thanks to you guys for listening. Even bigger thanks. You happen to be a supporter. If you want that, even bigger thanks because you don't have it yet. Head over to grandamerica.ca slash support. Sign up for a monthly or make a one-time donation. Uh, you can do all the stuff in the newsletter, spam, gram. Check out Rockfin, all that wonderful stuff. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week.
Thanks for watching live there, Stirrup. Oh, yeah, he's always there rambling. Hey, Stirrup. Oh, I thought that shut off. All right, guys, thanks for tuning into the live show. We'll be back, I think it's Wednesday next week. Yeah. Wednesday next week. I can't remember no. what to. Must be yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, it is. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. We'll see you Wednesday.